this week's vintage logo design in Photoshop concludes series 5 out of 5. So hey guys, welcome back to a brand new Photoshop design tutorial. My name is Manny and in this tutorial I'm going to teach you guys how to do the final series, 5 out of 5 of the vintage logo design in Photoshop. Let's get right away into it. So we're going to start out with file, new, create a cam, complete new canvas again. This time I'm going to go to my saved section here. Again guys, for you who are new around, have a look. There's another tutorial on the channel teaching you how to do canvas sizes if you're completely new to this. For those of you who are here for the fifth time of this week, um, of the series have a look it's again the same settings as we used before 1920 to 1080 the same canvas sizes you can also copy paste these if you like but remember these are purely made for YouTube not uh, for logo designs okay so this is um, just switched here my background colors back to black because I would like to have a back black background color when I start now. So let's hit create and right away we have a complete new canvas. Again, for those who are new, please do have a look on the channel for the canvas tutorial. Okay, I'm gonna double click on here and just rename this to black as well. This is our new background. I'm gonna hit okay and start right away with adding my image now to this tutorial. Okay, so I'm gonna just drag it into this Photoshop from my desktop and right away you can see it's a bit bigger, so I'm gonna scale it still. I'm gonna hold shift here and select an anchor point, make it a bit bigger and I'm going to clip this right away. Now you can all find this stuff on the Tronics Design Media Package, all the PSDs, shapes, brushes, everything from the last three years you will find in there. It's $4.99 a month and every month it gets a big update. So yeah, everything that you see on this channel will be in that um, Tronics Design Media Package if you look for these PSD files. Great, I'm also gonna right click here and just say rasterize this layer and quickly just gonna zoom in here and just wanna fix this little thing over here. So on the image itself, I'm just gonna go to the healing tool and select the healing brush tool over here, make the brush a little bit smaller with my cursors, hold Alt, sample an area from over here and then literally just gonna brush over here and again, hold Alt, Sample, by the time, hold Alt, Sample, 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 and hold Alt, Sample, Sample over here. I just wanna remove that thread a little bit. Okay, great. Now, we have that as our background layer and image. Now I'm gonna take the opacity down. I'm gonna go to like 30 or so, 40, maybe even 35. Quick thing I wanna show you guys also, if you press Command, I and invert this, you'll get a very white effect. So if you want to make the text black and let it stand out, you can also do the opposite. It doesn't need to be black always. Okay, let's invert that. Again, guys, I'm working on a Mac. That's why I'm saying Command I to invert. If you're a Windows user, please press Control when I say Command. Okay, great. I'll show that at the end one more time just to show you the effect that we can get out of this. Also, if you want to add a bit of color to this, you can go to adjustments here and play a little bit with the selective color adjustment layers. Head all the way to the neutrals and then tweak this a little bit. Or if you like, you can also obviously make it black and white to let that stand out even a bit more. I'm just going to delete this because I'm happy like as is. Okay, command G all together. So command and G and rename this, put it in a new group. I'm going to call this now my background. Cool. Now, let's start with the text right away. Uh, as every week almost, I'm gonna go to view and first of all, create guidelines. These just help me to establish the center point of my canvas. So I'm gonna go back to view, new guide again. Simply, you just select horizontally or vertical and write 50% and hit okay. So right away, Photoshop will put some nice guidelines into the center. Okay, next step, select the text tool from the tool panel, I'm gonna make a nice big selection over here and I'm gonna write my main word. Now obviously these logos are just made up and the names are made up, this is not real brand, so this is just establishing some cool vintage designs. I'm gonna go with Refinery, so that will be the brand name, Refinery, great. I'm gonna select all of that and first of all, I'm gonna show you the font, which is Mot, uh, Mot Serrat, again, that is a super difficult one, but this time it's extra bold. It is not just bold. I want to let it stand out really a lot. Also, guys, these fonts are not in the media package. Please, they are just linked down below in the description. You can find them on Google Fonts, on Duff Font, on Squirrel Font, all for free. 
Um, just read up on them if they are commercially usable or not, then you can use them for your logos, but they are not in the media package. Okay, so you can have a look down below in the description if you didn't get the right name here. Then let's uh, alter the, the size again. I'm gonna go with like 23, 25. I think I'm gonna stay with 23. Then white foreground color, yes please, okay. And let's have a look at the tracking still. So under my character box here, I'm gonna go with 500 for the moment, happy with that. Guys, if you don't have the character box here, literally just go to window and select character box or whatever you're missing, select it over here. Great, I'm gonna accept that, take the move tool, move that just for now somewhere here in the center. And I'm also gonna now make my life a little bit easier and just duplicate this. So I'm gonna press Command J, duplicate that layer, select it again, because I wanna stick with the same font. I'm just gonna switch to, uh, now I'm actually gonna stay with extra bold for now. And just gonna take the font size down to maybe like seven. Okay, which is, oh, that was one, super small. So seven, great. And we're gonna type here established. So let's do that. Something missing here, established. And also let's select it. Just highlight the whole thing and put the tracking down to like 200. Yeah, that's fine. Okay, hit enter, take the move tool. I'm gonna move it a bit up here, somewhere over here. And I'm also gonna now press Command J one more time. So just duplicate this, move it a little bit over here. And I also wanna write the year. So obviously I'm just gonna select a random year. It's gonna be maybe 1995, let's do that, <laughs> yeah. Okay, move it over here. Later we'll obviously move everything still further around. Then next step I wanna do is write authentic. I also wanna write something like uh, genuine quality and put like a, another logo there, so. Let's take again the refinery one. I'm just gonna duplicate this and move it all the way down to the bottom. Select the whole group, delete everything. I just wanna stick with an R and take that size maybe just to like 20. Okay, that's gonna be our main center of the logo. So let's leave that somewhere over here. Then we, I wanna put like a little bit of a ring around it, like a leaf ring or something. I know I have that in my shape library. Then next up, I'm still gonna put another shape over here, basically another text selection. And I'm also gonna write here authentic. Okay, and obviously I'm doing this quite quick and coming up here with names, you guys can obviously do that the way you like. I'm just gonna go with extra, just with normal bold, not extra bold. And I'm also gonna make this a bit smaller, something like nine pixels, nine to 10 pixels, so it's half the size. Maybe let's go with nine. Okay, that's great. I'm gonna move that over here. Then you have the R underneath. Let's take the R letter, move that up a little bit. Remember, I still wanna put also a banner behind the authentic, so we just have a different vintage design there. So I guess that authentic will still change a little bit. Okay, then let's copy paste authentic. I'm just gonna duplicate this, put it over here, and I wanna write something like genuine quality of the clothing. Perhaps this is a clothing brand or something that lines. Genuine. Let's accept it and press Command J, duplicate that, move it all the way over here and select it again. And I'm just gonna write quality. Okay, there we go. And now I'm gonna select quality. Actually, you know what? I did a mistake here, that was a bit stupid. Let's delete it and first take genuine and first check the tracking, check that we have the right size. So I'm gonna go like what, like seven or eight, a little bit smaller. So this R stands out a little bit more. Also the tracking, I would like to have that Mm, yeah, why not 500? It's, it's fine actually if it's 500. And I'm also gonna go with Monster Rat Bolt. So I'm happy with that. Let's just move it a bit closer. And now I'm gonna duplicate this and just put it over here. So I don't need to do all the steps again in case I need to do any other tracking or font sizes or so. Okay, great, have that in there. Now, now we're looking at just adding our shapes to everything. So I'm happy with all the text. I'm gonna select everything here, I'm holding shift. What also helps is if you hold shift and select the first and last layer and then Photoshop just selects everything. Press command G, put that together in a group and write here text. Great, so now let's create a new empty layer. And first of all, I'm gonna to go to the shape library again. So under the custom shape library, I'm gonna select this. I'm gonna go into my shape library 
and select first of all the banner that I have over here. Now in the Tronics Design Media Package you will find over 500 different shapes that you can download on an instant click and fill it up if you like. So do have a look at that. Currently mine is a bit empty but I have a ton of them. Okay, I'm going to hold shift and just make a nice selection over here, like so. Great, happy with that. And I'm just going to move that slightly down into the center. And you can see authentic is now disappearing. So obviously I need to put my shape underneath the text so that that can shine through. And also authentic is currently written in white. So the font color is white. It should be black to stand out. So I'm going to double click on it and just give this a new background color. Okay, and let's do that one more time. And just select it and give it black. Okay, hit enter. And now already I can see my shape. I can actually move that still a little bit up so it stands out nicely there. Great, next step I wanna do is go and get another shape layer here. Let me just take both of these shape layers and actually move them out because they are not currently, now they're currently with the other group and they're not separate. Okay, here we have them separate now on layer one again. I'm going to press U on the keyboard, go back into the shape library. And I just want to get here a little bit of a leaf um, circle. I don't know how to call this thing in English. A lot of leaves that... Yeah, let's press Command, Shift and H to hide the outline so you can actually see it. And that's also a nice, cool uh, look here for giving it a quality look. But I feel the spacing is still pretty bad. So I'm going to go open this again, shape two and R. I'm just going to move this slightly down so I get a bit of feel for it. Then I'm also going to take genuine and quality, move that a little bit down and maybe also a little bit closer. So let's just take genuine, move that a bit in. So I'm just looking at all the spacing in between here and here. So it gets a bit better. Okay, great. I like what I see now. Now to the final change, just go to shape again, another new layer. I'm going to press U on the keyboard again and go one more time to get a crown shape. Here it is. Okay, so that's also again in the shape library, everything in there, in the media library. Okay, I'm going to make a cool little crown over here. Press Command, Shift and H to hide the paths there. Take the Move tool and also move that slightly into the center here. That's also why I have my guidelines here. Then select Established. Put that a bit down. I would also like to have that a bit more up and 1995 as well and move that just with the cursors left and right. Okay, and then for the final touch, I'm just going to take 1995, establish the text layers and shape three, and move the whole thing down a little bit like so. Great. Let's go to view, cl clear the guides because I cannot see them anymore and zoom out a little bit to get an idea of what we've just created. So I think still yeah, overall, everything is nicely aligned and I really like what I see. So again, guys, that's it for creating quick uh, vintage logo design. I want to show you one or two tricks quickly still. I'm just going to press Command G, put all the shapes together in one group and give you a quick overall effect. I'm just going to make here design. So I want to show you something. You can also use this on a white background. It doesn't always need to be black. So if I'm going to invert this with Command I and make it white, Obviously, then our text is now white and it doesn't stand out. So if I just take the whole text, I can double tap here on the main group we have added everything to, say color overlay, and just obviously add, give that like a dark color or something. Hit OK, hit OK, and right away you can see you've created a complete new design out of this, like a different look and feel. Remember, again, authentic here is written in black, so you won't see it, but there's one last trick I can show you for that. Let me just go back in the history panel. So I'm back with our normal image. And what I want to show you guys is I can now select authentic and we're just going to double tap on here. So you can already see if I hold command and now tap again onto the text layer, um, it will make, so to say, a selection around the text. And now I can actually cut it out of my banner if I like. Let me show you this, what I mean. I'm going to turn off authentic. You can still see it's now being selected here. I'm going to minimize the text layer, go back to shapes. Remember, it's just a small object and a shape, so I need to first rasterize this. So I'm going to right click, say rasterize. So it's a normal layer. And now if I hit backspace, basically delete, it will erase all the details and all the 
selected areas from that layer, from that banner, so to say. So now we have no wording here and whatever is behind it will shine through. So if it's dark here on the image, you will see it dark. If it's bright, you will see it there. Let me show you quickly an example. If I just make a selection here and whatever, give that a red color or any specific color. Say OK, Command D, get out of the selection. If I move this behind, you can see now it also starts to appear. So this is a pretty cool technique to just cut that out a bit. OK, delete it, zoom out, and right away you can see that is all for this week tutorial how to create a little small little vintage logo effect here so yeah guys that's it for this week's tutorial do give me a thumbs up if you like this tutorial let me know in the comments down below what you would like to see next what i can improve for this channel and also what you would like to see here so yeah thanks again guys hit me up with a thumbs up there if you liked it thanks for watching and i'll see you all in the next tutorial thanks guys see ya